In this video, I'm going to be going over how to create an FUI landscape or futuristic user interface landscape. Now, there's a couple of different ways I'm going to approach this, some, some different techniques. And what you'll see is we can combine these in a variety of different ways. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so as I said, we're gonna be creating these landscapes, these FUI landscapes, a couple of different ways. Here is one example. Let me go ahead and play it for you. Definitely one approach to the animation here. Um, this is kind of the simpler one, whereas this one is a little bit more complex, has some more flexibility. So let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, now I should also mention that there are some other FUI examples in the asset browser. They approach FUI a little bit differently, whether it's splines and the redshift object tag. Um, so this is just to try and keep things simple. So I'm gonna create a landscape here for this first one. Okay, and what's nice about the landscape is it gives us a lot of detail very quickly. What's bad about the landscape is it's a little bit tricky to animate, especially if you want to use MoGraph. Now it is possible, um, but uh, as it's our simple version, we won't be doing that. So we have our landscape here, um, and we're also gonna be using Redshift. So I'm going to make sure I switch my render to Redshift, though really these techniques could be adapted to any render, including the standard or physical renderer. Um, and I'm also going to add a dome light. Now I'm not actually gonna get a whole lot of lighting from this, I don't want any lighting. Instead, I'm just gonna switch the color to nearly black. And this is just so Redshift is forced to kind of light this and not just give us the default um, lighting. So something like that ought to work just fine, okay? And really the majority of the, the heavy lifting here comes from the material we're going to create. So I'll come in here, create a default material, a Redshift material, pop open my node editor and dock that so we can all see it. And the key node here is the wire frame shader or texture, I should say. So I'm gonna drag that in or at least try to and miss the first time. And then I can connect this to our opacity, okay? So that's our opacity. And now if I was to start this, we should see a little bit of this, and if we don't, what we may want to do is just try adjusting the base color to something a bit brighter and adding some emission, okay? And of course, what would help is applying this to our object as well, but yes, there we go. There we have um, our, our wireframe. Doesn't look very good yet, so I'm gonna select the wireframe node, I'm gonna do a couple of things, going to uncheck show hidden edges. That'll get rid of the um, triangle lines, right? So we just want four-sided polygons. We can uncheck show hidden edges. We also have this wire thickness we could adjust. And I may do that, but for right now, this looks pretty good. And I wanna switch these colors. Um, yeah, I set, set swap color, swap colors. There we go. Cool. So there is our grid, if you will, on our landscape where we're just seeing the edges. And what's great about this is if we want to animate it, one of the ways I animated those previews, or at least that first one, is with the height. The other thing I animated were the number of segments. But we, if we want to get some color with this, we're going to need to use a ramp. So I will create a ramp node, connect this to our base color. Okay, as well as our emission color. Awesome, that completely disappeared. That was super expected. And I'm also just gonna load a preset here for the gradients, let me pull this up. Um, I was using full color in those other ones, but uh, you can choose whatever gradient you want, make your own. And then what I need to do is hide that dome light for starters so I can see things. Um, and also toggle off materials so I can see my geometry, uh, is switch the projection here from UVW mapping to flat. Uh, now we should be able to see that if we go into texture mode here and also have our landscape selected. Um, and I'm gonna fit this to our object just by right clicking and choosing, oops, right clipping, clicking on our texture tag here and choosing fit to object. And you can see it kind of fits it just fine. So now when we start our IPR, we should, See that ramp, and we do. And so really, that's about it. The last part of this to really kind of take it to the next level was to use the Redshift camera. Uh, make sure I'm looking through that. 
and to set up some depth of field as well as uh, some lens effects. So in the optical section for the focus distance, I'll just choose the middle there and start lowering the aperture until I get the desired result. So if point 0.1 doesn't do it, then I'll go even lower to um, point, point 0.1, although once again, turning on bokeh or setting things up correctly like that can help. So yeah, that looks pretty good, maybe a bit too extreme. And since I didn't have that on as I was changing those initially, I'm not entirely certain what values I should be working with, but 0.3 seems to look pretty good. And then lastly, come into our lens effects, turn on blue, switching it to override, lowering our threshold. And if you're not seeing show up, anything show up in your perspective view, it could be the threshold, but it could also be we need to toggle on post effects. And it is here. Um, so I'm a little bit confused why we're not seeing anything, but it can also have to do with the amount of emission in your material. So if you have other things in your scene, what I would recommend doing is really cranking up this emission. Say something like five, it's gonna make it a lot brighter here. Uh, and that will allow me and my camera to go in and raise this th threshold a bit. Okay, and if I'm seeing that the, the ramp is getting colors up here that I don't like, I mean, I guess it is kind of looping there. You can always adjust this. And so maybe what I would do is take these out, get that to green, and I don't know if I can distribute knots. Perfect, and that will give me something a little bit more distributed. And if I wanna pull in the green a little bit more to get some of that, then by all means, do it. And you can make this your own any way you see fit. And like I said, uh, what I animated in that first one was the height as well as the width and depth segments. Now, moving on to the more complex one, gonna start over here. Now we'll leave that open. We're gonna start by switching to Redshift again, just to get that out of the way. And instead of starting with a landscape, we're gonna start with a plane. This is gonna give us a little bit more control, um, make it a bit easier to work with MoGraph. Um, and what we'll do uh, is use a displacer on this. Okay, now we could use a random effector set to object mode as well. That would be another way to use um, this, but I think the displacer is gonna work a little bit better and I'll show you why. Um, let's just get rid of all of those other things that I don't need for the time being. Uh, and that's because since the displacer uses the Cinema 4D kind of shader options, um, I can really build these up quite well using the layer shader here. So I'm gonna start by adding the layer shader and um, I'm gonna start by adding the gradient, the gradient ramp here. Um, now I also wanna make sure my plane has plenty of segments. So we'll start with 100. And in the, the layer shader, click on the little thumbnail of the gradient to go into it. I'm gonna switch the type here to circular. And you can see how that's starting to kind of push it down. That's the opposite of what I want. So I will right click and invert. And from here, back in um, the object tab, I can either increase the strength or the height to kind of get this a little bit more like a landscape. Now also back in our gradient here, I have some turbulence and that can start to give us some detail for our landscape. Now, one of the things that I do like about the landscape is that it is kind of flat along the edges. We could absolutely, you know, use our field, I'm sorry, our gradient to kind of trim this down a little bit to help with that. So that can be very helpful. And this is just kind of our first layer, our base layer, if you will. Um, with that turbulence. You know, you can increase the octaves as well. You can see how it does a little bit, but seems to really stop around five. So I'm gonna go up and then what I'm gonna add to do, <laughs> add now is a noise on top of it. All right, now I don't want this noise in normal mode. I'm gonna want it to be in something like multiply screen or overlay, okay? And then I can adjust the opacity here. And you can kind of see a preview of what we're getting. Uh, now what I'm probably gonna do with this noise is make it a lot smaller. And you can see, how it's being applied to all those same areas that our gradient is. Okay, maybe that's a bit too much strength, so I can lower that just to get a little bit more. And you could build this up as much or as little as you like. And ultimately what I ended up doing was putting this in a subdivision surface as well in order to kind of build this up um, and get you know some, some more smoothing on this. And you could 
repeat this process on this subdivision surface level. You could group it, right? You could add another displacer here and, you know, continue to kind of build this up as much as you want by adding, you know, say another noise, we'll see how that's affecting it. Um, so it's, you know, really entirely up to you how far you want to take this. And that's one of the reasons why I like this particular method is that you can build up the detail in a lot of different ways. Okay, but I'm actually, I mean, I don't mind that, but let's just get rid of it for simplicity's sake. Now what we're gonna do is create a field to work with here. So field, um, I used a cylindrical field only because it made it, I mean, a capsule works too, but it made the top easier to kind of get in, involved with this. With the circle, when I scaled it down, it took a little bit longer for it to kind of work. So you can see all I really did is animate um, the size of this. Okay, in this case, the scale. If I go to the object tab though, um, or select our field, we don't have just a single size, but that's what I would animate. So let's actually do switch this to cylinder. Perfect. That way it's the radius I'm really just animating. I probably was in the capsule. There we go. But notice how the height is kind of consistent, whereas if it isn't, um, you can see that can impact it as well. And you know, maybe this is another property you could animate. But yeah, I'll take the radius, animate it from zero to, I don't know, probably like 500, however big I want. Really just want it to be something like that. So great, that's looking good. And we could use our same material. Uh, let's create our dome light really quick. It would help if I was in the right area. Dome light, once again, just about pure black. And start our render, open up our material. Why don't I just come here and copy this material? No need to reinvent the wheel here. Apply that to our plane. And once again, don't trust what we see in our perspective view. So I'll turn off that, um, turn off our material so we can see them a little bit better. Make sure this fits by going into flat and in texture mode. Once again, just like before fitting it. Perfect. I'm gonna hide that field because it's kind of annoying. There we go. So what we should see at this point is, hey, there we go. Now, imp another important thing to think about here uh, is whether or not you want to see through this object, okay? Right, because right now we can see behind it, which is a little bit distracting. And so my recommendation would be uh, to duplicate your thing. And you really can't use, I mean, I guess you could use an instance, um, but I've had mixed results with that. I'm gonna switch this to object mode, scale it down just a bit. So to 0.99, right now we can see this. Notice how we can't see through it. Now we do get a little bit of overlapping, um, you know, a material can help with this. What else could help is using our Redshift object tag and just having it be a mat um, can help. But that's kind of the main way I would get around this. You could also do it just in the material as well. Using um, our material here is kind of a base layer in either a blend material or a material layer and then having, you know, just something else underneath it. But I'm gonna just kind of roll with this as is. And what we're gonna do is kind of get rid of that outside because that part is a little bit boring. And as this kind of scales up, we don't necessarily wanna see our plane the entire time. Also those colors, I don't know if that's entirely accurate, but I suppose it's possible um, because of how high or the height of this, see how it changes and gets pushed lower. So that's kind of what's causing that, not a fan of it, but it is what it is for right now at least. And so, all right, great. How can we, you know, get rid of that part of the plane? That'll help get rid of it. Well, we have our field here doing a lot of work. And with any field, uh, it's creating uh, the color remapping. It's creating the strength. Um, just like when you're working, you know, with it in MoGraph where it's 0% uh, strength or 100% strength. And what we're going to do is use this field in a vertex map. So I will right click on my plane, go to other tags, choose a vertex map, uh, make sure fields is checked on, it should be by default. 
since we're already in the fields tab and drag in our cylindrical field, okay? And what that is going to do is just create a vertex map based on that field. And with this, we can now use it in our node editor as I've used in quite a few different videos, but we'll do it one more time. So we're gonna add a node called a vertex attribute. Let's dock this bad boy up again. Go. And with our vertex attribute node selected, the attribute name is going to be our vertex map. We are going to then plug this into a ramp so we can change this color to black and white. Okay, there's our ramp, out color into the super specific alt input. Okay, so that's looking good. And what we would do is multiply that with our wireframe. But just so we get this started and looking good, let's just first connect it to opacity and make sure we get something like this. So that's what we want. Okay. Now we did lose our wireframe and we could totally use this uh, look as well. I should also point out with our wireframe that turning on the subdivision on and off makes a difference, but we'll see how to do that shortly. Um, but yeah, we need to kind of mix these and we essentially want to multiply them. I want to take the black values from our ramp, add it to the black values of our wireframe. So I'm going to use a multiply node, right? All of the blending modes from Photoshop, After Effects, we pretty much have nodes for them in Redshift or different ways of using them. So that should give us the best of both worlds. And as I mentioned, we can then use a sub turn that subdivision surface off if you want to simplify it. And, you know, honestly, we're not terribly far off from those kind of backgrounds or environments that you see in like a lot of retro wave, synth wave type, chill wave, whatever video. So um, this could be a good place to start for something like that. But once again, we wouldn't necessarily want to see through them. And that's where duplicating this and scaling it down just ever so much um, can be one way uh, to do this. Okay. And really, that's it. Um, from here, we can now um, animate this displacer. Um, well, we did animate the displacer using our field. And so if we were to render this out, you know, this is essentially what we would get. Not all that different than what I was showing at the beginning. And you could do so much more with this. You know, another way of, of kind of getting started with something like this is to take something like a landscape and then also put it into a is it? Where is it? Atom array. Okay. Now, if you've never used an atom array before, it creates spheres where there's points, cylinders where there's edges. Now, um, the items or objects are too big. So why don't we just turn them down, say to one and one. And so this is a way to kind of create that same geometry uh, we are seeing. So if I just take this to say point two and kind of see what we're working with now. So this could be another cool way of doing this. Um, what's a bit tricky with the atom array and why I didn't show it is once again, kind of the animation options we have with it. Um, we don't have anything kind of built in. Um, you can work with the landscape because that's what um, is generating the atom array, but using MoGraph can be a little bit tricky, especially if you wanted to have the, the spheres kind of pop in or the, the cylinders kind of do anything. But what really helps sell these types of effects is layers of detail here. So not just, you know, this mountain, but some other lines, another grid, that type of thing. And if you look at the, um, some of the example scenes here, I think if you just type in FUI, you'll get some of them. That's exactly what you'll see, right? So um, these use, like I said, a lot of different techniques, but if you look at it, what really sells this is all of the different elements in it right? Where you have all of the different kind of graphs put together, different sizes, different colors, you know, kind of the, the black glass material, but that's what um, really brings it all together. And so this, what we've been doing is kind of one part of that. And it's a good place to start, but it needs more to really kind of sell it and, and take it to where it needs to be. So hopefully this helps. Um, but I think that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you could do me a favor and like this video and subscribe, I would also really appreciate it. And until next time, take care.